Robert Plank Show, Episode 90, The Path to Internet Freedom. Start with that day job and transition from freelancing to products and membership sites. Welcome back to The Robert Plank Show. Today's program is sponsored by Profit Dashboard. If you're tired, fed up, frustrated, or burned out from internet marketing, if you're struggling with traffic, products, income, tech stuff, looking for the perfect solution, or are even starting from scratch, check out ProfitDashboard.com and you can find out how we generated an extra $4,200 per month starting over from scratch from just 45 minutes per day. Now that, that offer, Profit Dashboard, it relates very well to today's training, today's talk, which is where we're going to talk about how to make some money, how to get over that hump, how to get over that middle ground, that learning period, that transition period, and how to shorten it as fast as possible. And that's what your goal should be. So where you started off in your internet business is, I mean, on day one, you decided uh, to make some kind of a book, a course, a product, an app something some kind of a solution to someone's problem there's no such business on the internet where that at least not one that lasts very long where you can just go and wake up and make money you have to provide some kind of value to the marketplace so that means that if someone is buying our backup creator plugin or they're buying our profit dashboard course or even if you do something like freelancing or uh, someone pays you for some kind of a service or for coaching in every one of those transactions it's a win-win scenario you're making money sure but someone else is getting something in return for that now Winston Churchill says you will never reach your destination if you stop and throw stones at every dog that barks so there's no possible way there's no time in the world to do every possible method every possible path of making money online uh, but you need to focus on one or two things and you might you might end up throwing one, some of those things out as you go along you might uh, have some kind of trial and error but i mean the the things that i'm seeing the problems i'm seeing people having are that well, first of all they stop before they start they enjoy starting more than they enjoy finishing and then they just they don't follow through and take things as far as they need to go and that means that whatever you're doing uh, out there on the internet you are a business owner I know that you're work from home self-employed entrepreneur but any way you slice it you are a business owner and it's up to you it, I mean it's your responsibility to market yourself in the same way that if you were uh, trying to get a new job if you were applying for a new job we've all been there right you polish up your resume go to interviews you market yourself uh, but when you're a, a online business owner you have to continue marketing yourself over and over and that means you create some websites and you finish them you have actual things for sale and then you tell people about those things over and over and find new and exciting ways to reach them and new things to say and that is why I put out blog posts podcasts and emails put out YouTube videos all that and more but you have to start somewhere. And I think that uh, there, there are very few things that I would go back and change. I mean, I, I have very few regrets. And I think that one of the things that, I, that I'm very glad that I did was I spent three years at a day job. So from age 22 to 25, uh, I did both. And actually, to be honest, uh, from age 17 to 22, I, I struggled. I struggled with this online business stuff. And from uh, high school age into college age, I, I, I hardly made any money. I mean, I made uh, probably a, a few thousand dollars per month, if that, uh, during, you know, between age 17 and 22. I really, really struggled, and I felt like I was, uh, I ha had all kinds of projects in motion. I probably had about five or ten things that were always half done, uh, and I, it, I just felt like I I had all these opportunities. I had all this free time, so it's not like I was I was lacking of time to to uh, put into my business. And I was actually using that time to build websites and build software and things like that. Uh, but I wasn't making the amount of money that I really wanted. And so, as I uh, finished college, then I got a job right away at the same college where I attended. So I. I transition from a student to a, a staff member uh, and it was a programming job and suddenly between age 22 and 25 everything changed 
uh, not only was I m making money from that day job, but my internet business exploded despite the fact that, well, I had less time to focus on that internet business. So it was a, a very weird situation. And and I mean, out of all the different, um, the different advantages to having a day job plus an online business at the same time, having those two incomes coming in, uh, the other advantages were that I was actually in a way paid to uh, enhance and increase my skills that later on paid off uh, in my online business. And I mean, I was still making money from it. And you can turn your nose up all day long about uh, like a, a measly 30000 or $40,000 a year job. But this was a job that I had for three years. So if you think about it, uh, I piled up $100,000 in income uh, just for uh, a job that I actually enjoyed doing. So we're going to talk today about these four phases, about going from a day job to freelancing to information products to membership sites. And I think that uh, as we unpack each of these levels, What's really important is that you enjoy whatever it is that you do and you have some amount of overlap that will get you to whatever the next phase is. So what does that mean? It means that I had a day job uh, for those three years and it was a programming job and it was a, a programming job doing web based things which I like to do and that was uh, programming PHP scripts and doing some SharePoint stuff and, and uh, Java beans and things like that if you know what those things are but those were all skills that helped me out in my own online business and I was excited to go into that office uh, every day. I, I probably would have done the job for free to be honest. So it's not like I was uh, you know cleaning out toilets or delivering pizzas or things like that. Uh, it was something I enjoyed but it was also a way for me to not only cut myself some financial breathing room but also uh, get some skills that paid off later on in my internet marketing career. And even if you yourself are not a programmer, I mean let's think about if you I mean, if you want to be a better marketer, you want to be a better copywriter, wouldn't it make sense that you uh, got some kind of a job, some kind of a copywriting job or some kind of a marketing job? And I mean, I don't know what your situation is. I don't know what age you're, you are. So maybe you are unhirable. Maybe that's what got you to this point in the first place. But even if you are, let's say that you're in your 50s or 60s, right? Well, you're kind of in the situation now where you probably have more free time than you did in your 30s and 40s because you don't have uh, kids and family and a job to deal with and things like that so one advantage to that is you have more free time uh, but what I would suggest is that you pick up some kind of a skill to make yourself marketable the same skills that made you marketable in 1975 aren't gonna work in this day and age and likewise if you're in your uh, 20s and 30s maybe like you know early 20s to maybe early 30s then you're in this this uh, phase where if your life goes the way most people's lives go, then in your 40s and 50s, you're going to have uh, a lot less free time. So it's up to you to uh, to find the time in the day to uh, to do what needs to be done and build up the money that needs to be done and get the skills now that will pay off later. Uh, so you can't just jump from one thing to another. I think that everyone's looking for the shortcut and everyone's looking for uh, the ideal situation and you don't know the ideal situation and all you can do right now is the best that you can do. And so if you honestly think that uh, if you wake up in the morning and uh, even if you only have an hour or hour and a half to focus on your online business, now whether that is because you, your family, because your day job, because you're old and tired or because or whatever situation is, if you can honestly say that you put as much as you possibly could into that hour or that hour and a half, then great, you're doing great. And but when I say as much as you possibly could, that doesn't mean filling the time. That means completing those money-making tasks that need to happen. So if you're if there's any possible way that you can get any kind of a, a regular job, uh, even even something part time, full time, there is no shame in getting some income rolling in. And I would even say uh, that, you know, there are some people that use uh, Airbnb for their income. There are some people that use uh, being an Uber driver for their income because if they're out and about doing something like, for example, uh, I, I have one student who uh, builds an Amazon FBA business using our Dropship CEO program. This is where you uh, get 
get products made, get like physical products like a kitchen spatula, for example, or you go to discount stores and buy candy or things like that and buy them and ship them off to Amazon. But this particular person, when he's out on his little runs, he turns on his Uber app. That way uh, he can go out and complete these money making tasks. But then if someone needs a, a Uber ride, then he also makes that money as well. So there is absolutely no shame in starting off and, and f finding a way to just generate even $100 this month. And you can't psych yourself out and you can't say, well, I only made $100 this month. Well, that's $100 that you wouldn't have had. And the idea is that not every month will be like this. Uh, the idea is that then you grow to 200, 500, 1,000 and so on. But you can't be too snooty. You can't be too good for it. You need some kind, any kind of income coming in right now, uh, some kind of day job, whatever that means for you. If that means that you sign up uh, at TaskRabbit or Craigslist or uh, Uber or whatever, get some income rolling in, overlap skills with your internet business if possible, and find that win-win scenario where this other this initial source of income to cut yourself some breathing room it's something that you enjoy doing you make money and then it transitions to your other skills now phase two is then freelancing so what so all right so freelancing this is where you get paid to you get paid for your uh, for your output as opposed to just your hours. So this is the next logical step here, right? So you start off with a day job, which is great because it's reliable. Well, it's reliable unless you get fired or laid off or things like that. But this is where you trade your time for money. But then freelancing, well, it's a little better than than trading your time for money if you do it right. OK, so here's the, the wrong way to do it. Here's like one of the very, very few mistakes I made. But actually, I'm glad I made it because it was a learning experience. I am a computer programmer, and what I would do is, I would uh, I would find these jobs uh, to program stuff for people, and I would do them for just a flat rate. So, for example, six hundred bucks or twelve hundred bucks to make something that probably took me a day or two. Uh, and so I would go and, and code something up, and uh, you know maybe maybe a, a one four hour day and another four hour day later it would be completed. And then the problem with this is then uh, the person that paid me money would in a sense hold me hostage and they would say well until I'm not going to pay you the money yet because I also want you to add this 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 and this don't worry it'll only take a few minutes then a week or two later now I'm being paid for you know 20 percent of what I thought I was being paying so the lesson there is to do this thing called freelancing but to take on small jobs don't become a monthly employee and don't just trade one day job for another. Get good at just completing something in one hour a day and avoid uh, that that little micro story, that phenomenon I just told you, which the, the word for that is scope creep. OK, the word for that is where uh, someone hires you for something and you underestimate the length of time that it will take to create and then they keep following up with you again and again and you thought man I'm doing awesome because I was just paid five thousand dollars for to write a book for example I thought I would take a month it took three months now I'm making a third of what I thought I was so the answer there is to complete small jobs and our course profit dashboard.com is all about churning out lots of small jobs so that you don't have to go back and think about it ever again someone hires you for example to um, to make a blog post or maybe they'll give you a bunch of content and they'll say here go to this blog and schedule up the content maybe someone will say uh, here's my my podcast episode if you know how to edit audio then you get paid to quickly edit the audio throw in music boom you're done uh, someone might pay you to uh, write an article if you're a fast writer someone might pay you to uh, to record a, an audio message they might have you read a script I've done that one uh, they might pay you to record a screen capture video of you viewing their site they might pay you to record a, a video on your web camera uh, so whatever whatever it is that you do and we have lots of uh, templates and and opportunities for you in profit dashboard the point is that you don't want to be on the hook for something weeks later you want to wake up you see a job you get paid for it you're done in a few minutes and then everyone's happy so 
day job and freelancing. So far, it seems like some of these things that we do are, are uh, take a lot of time, maybe a lot of effort, and not a lot of money. So what is this all leading up to? Well, this is leading up to the third phase, which is an information product. So even when you're working at a day job, well, you're, you're solving someone else's problem that they need someone else to answer phones or optimize web pages for search engines or or handle customer support or whatever uh, and when you're freelancing it's the same deal there if someone wants to uh, hire someone else to get a logo created you plug in uh, your template and then there you go that is the problem being solved and this gets back to the the whole idea of win-win that no one just is just gonna pay you money just for the heck of it they need to get they want to get more out of what they're paying you than what it is that they're paying but the advantage to that is that uh, if you have these skills that other people don't have then you win as well uh, so the point of all this is that you want to solve a real problem and this is what an information product is all about and this is where that idea of skill overlap is super helpful. For example, let's say that you found yourself a day job where uh, you improved a company's search engine presence, right? You knew how to uh, SEO optimize their web pages. You know how to get them to climb in the rankings. You knew how to do all these things to clean up web pages. And let's say that you found a way to enjoy that. And then that led you to this thing called freelancing where you uh, used our profit dashboard course and posted a job on a, on a site called Fiverr where you would clean up uh, someone's uh, on-page search engine uh, code right you would improve someone's search engine optimization and then you got good at that and then that could lead you to writing a quick report or making some quick videos that would solve that problem and don't even worry about putting yourself out of business because if you search on how to how to clean up SEO or how to climb in the Google rankings there are tons and tons of free videos free articles and paid products and DVDs and books and all kinds of things with that specific problem but some people find you in that way. Some people find you by searching for that problem and they're not necessarily finding you. And what you want to do is find that sweet spot between power, simplicity, and speed. Here's what I mean is you want to actually uh, solve someone's problem and you want to give them a preferably like a written maybe like a 10 or 20 page PDF document with screenshots explaining how to clean up someone's on-page SEO and climb the Google rankings so you want to give them the power to do all those things but you also want to make it simple you don't want to give them a bunch of choices or give them a bunch of ways that can go wrong give them a simple step-by-step -step checklist and deliver it in such a way that they can do it fast it can be done today not months from now so there's the power the simplicity and speed where you're solving a real problem and then this leads us to the fourth and final phase membership sites and passive income so if you get used to this idea that you have some skills people without the skills uh, need to solve the problem or maybe even they have the skills but they'd rather hire you to do it uh, now you can get good at making like these mega courses and when I say a mega course I mean something that is about uh, four parts four modules each module is about 60 to 90 minutes and each module gets someone to the next stage in their business and and hopefully shows a real case study so maybe you could show how you took a, a bad uh, search engine listing and made it good so the point of this is that as as you're doing all this you're building up these uh, these assets so to speak you're building up your email list you're getting more traffic and you're pulling around with different offers so that when you it comes time to give people the big solution the big uh, high ticket solution now you can use the untapped potential of that email list you've been building a list of people who have hired you a list of people who have uh, bought those low ticket products from you those PDF reports and things like that so then you can actually do some real internet marketing and we call this a two-week mini launch where basically we have a, a long-form direct response sales letter and you can find what that looks like at maybe uh, profit dashboard.com or membership cube.com so it's a long web page explaining what it is someone can buy and uh, then what we do is every day for about two weeks we keep on emailing our list or social media presence if you can get affiliates on board great if you can uh, run a free one hour pitch webinar using a service called go to webinar that's great too but 
even if you don't have a huge reach, now the mindset, now your focus is on piling in the latest batch of your members. So if that means every month you go and pile in 10 or 50 or 100 new members, now you're just piling in the latest batch. So those uh, four steps are to go from a day job to freelancing to information products and then finally the light at the end of the tunnel membership sites and passive income and the idea here is that all internet businesses need to have these three components I'm about to tell you list traffic and offers okay list traffic and offers so uh, what that means is that you have uh, a list and the traditional uh, form of this are our email addresses and even in this day and age with Facebook and Twitter and things like that uh, email list is still the best thing you could have and you know what as soon as uh, Amazon stops emailing me then maybe it'll be time to give up that email list but email list is still uh, the best resource you can have uh, and I think anyone who tells you to not build a list is just uh, they don't want to think about how small their list is. So a list of subscribers, you think of these and there's two kinds. There's prospects who have not bought from you and buyers who have bought from you. And the good thing is that if you have a website set up and you have a download page or a membership site, there are ways to capture or have someone uh, sign up for a buyer's only list. So even if someone's only paid you $7 or they paid you $1,000, give those buyers away to sign up for your email list uh, and a good place to, a good service to, to build up an email list is Aweber, that's uh, aweber.com or doubleagentautoresponder.com if you prefer to use my affiliate link. So we have this thing called an email autoresponder where subscribers can sign up for updates, a thing called an opt-in page where there is a form where they can enter their name and email address to either get a free thing or register for updates for the thing they just bought. And then you have uh, a thing called a timed follow-up sequence where emails kind of come in every few days to, to remind them to take action on what they bought, to give them some free stuff to whet their appetite, and then sell them on the next thing. So that's all great, right? That's all great for me to say, have a web page, have a, a place for buyers to go, but nothing happens without traffic. And traffic, most people don't even realize this is a thing that they need, but you need to be around a bigger community than yours. And so Facebook groups, it's kind of tough to get people off Facebook or get people uh, to sign up to enter their email address for, for something outside of Facebook. Uh, and message boards are better for this, uh, but even better are joint ventures. Even better are where you can partner up with someone and create a product together, interview them on your podcast, have them as your affiliates. Uh, then there's free traffic, which we pretty much call search engine optimization, where we put out blog posts, guest posts on other people's blogs, YouTube videos, podcasts, helpful content, so that if, for example, you in particular are looking for how to transition from products and day jobs to membership sites, you find this podcast, you find out about ProfitDashboard.com, and then that is how uh, you buy from me and get on my list. And then there's paid traffic, which we pretty much call pay-per-click, where you have uh, retargeting, so like if someone comes to your website and leaves, you cookie them, your banner ads follow them around on the internet, then they come back and they buy. Uh, run Google ads, Facebook ads, Bing ads, and then finally offers, which are things people can buy. And this doesn't necessarily mean you making a product. It definitely doesn't mean you take six months to make a product. Don't even take six months to make a high ticket product. There's no reason to waste six months making anything when you can do it faster, and many times it comes out better when you do it in a rush anyway. So offers, we're talking about affiliate products. So register at, at sites like clickbank.com as an affiliate, and then you can just be, you can recommend different products to other people and test the waters before you spend time making your own products. Uh, you can buy resale rights at a site called master-resale-rights.com. And that means that if you, if you want to sell uh, a using our search engine optimization example, if you want to sell a course, a video course about how to uh, increase Google rankings, but you don't know enough about that to uh, to make a course quite yet, 
or you don't know how to record video and things like that, you can just buy the rights to videos from someone who already made them and sell them yourself. Uh, you can play around with $7 solutions, low ticket solutions. So if you can find just a quick, even just like how to use a, a quick piece of a search engine software, like a keyword ranking software or a keyword finder software. And I would recommend that you go to a site called Udemy, that's U-D-E-M-Y.com and just see what kind what what kind of courses are sold what kind of ten dollar twenty dollar courses sell very well and then don't copy anyone for sure but look at their table of contents to get ideas of how you can do a better job and then once you play around and get good at putting out these little solutions then you can graduate to things like $200 or $500 for part membership courses where you have a video, you have a, a the video transcribed into a text format, you have checklists, you maybe bundle a piece of software, maybe uh, charge $500 for that four part course, but you give them a bigger result, a, a more one click solution for a higher price, and then even play around with having a $2,000 per month coaching program where you meet with someone once per week uh, over Skype or over GoToWebinar and actually help them out with their business. And this is great because it, in a lot of ways, it comes full circle, right? You went from being an hourly employee and maybe you're making 2,000 bucks a month and it would take you all freaking day to fulfill that. And now you're making $2,000 a month and you're only meeting with someone one hour a day. That's called scaling up. And the other bonus to all this, the bonus to transitioning from phase one, which was the day job, phase two, which was freelancing, phase three, which was information products, and phase four, which is membership sites, is that you end up having you end up having no choice but to pick up good time management skills. Like don't check your email first thing in the morning. Don't even have Facebook or any of that stuff open during the day. Uh, don't multitask. Just be 100% focused on what it is you're doing. Complete four daily tasks in your business. Wake up an hour earlier. Leave the computer when you're done. Uh, and then you kind of, in, in a lot of ways, get uh, get battle hardened or you get in shape in kind of the same way where uh, if, you, if you run a mile every day, you'll get really good at running a mile. But if you don't run for a couple months, then now you're suddenly out of shape. Same thing with lifting weights or whatever metaphor that you want to do. So, I mean, we talked about all these things like these different phases and list traffic and offers. And so that's all great theory. But what should you specifically do? Well, what you should do specifically is join us in our ProfitDashboard.com course. It shows you how to make an income with Fiverr. We don't say, well, you could make an income here and here and here. We say, no, join this site called Fiverr. Now, now what is Fiverr and why the heck is it that important? Well, Fiverr is a place where the, their shtick is that anyone can go in and, uh, and buy something for $5, right? And so it sounds really good from a buyer point of view because you say, well, awesome. If I want someone to hand out flyers, write me an article, make me a video, audio, WordPress blog, whatever, it's only five bucks. But then as a seller, you say, why the heck would I even work for $5? Well, there's a couple answers to that. Uh, the first answer is that you can have upsells. The second answer is that if you charge $5, for something that takes you three minutes, well then, was that worth it? And if you can get 10 or 20 of those $5 payments coming in every day, is that worth it? Well, yes. Now, the other thing, the other, the reason why I, I brought you up to speed with this thing called list traffic and offers, maybe you've heard something similar, or maybe you have some of those pieces in place. The problem usually with list traffic and offers is that there is a lot of stuff to set up. You have to get an AdWords uh, account. You have to figure out how to put out podcasts and YouTube videos and retargeting. And what's great about this site called Fiverr is that it has built-in traffic, okay? So it's, for example, you go on a site like Facebook, you find a high traffic group, you post there, you get a bunch of likes and comments. So Facebook is an example of a very high traffic site and that's great, but now what's the problem with Facebook? The problem with Facebook is that if you post something there, like you post a link for something for someone to buy, people tend to not click off Facebook and you don't know who you're getting. You don't know if you're getting buyers. You don't know if you're getting someone uh, from overseas or someone who's young or old or not even interested in what, you're what you want. So traffic is good, but buyer traffic is better. Now, where do you find buyer traffic? If you go to sites like Craigslist, eBay, Amazon, 
those are all I mean if you go to Amazon you're looking to buy something usually right or maybe you're doing research to buy something but the end goal is to buy something as opposed to on Facebook you might not be in a buying mood but you're on a site like Amazon you are going to buy something it's only a matter of time well the same is true on Fiverr if someone is looking on Fiverr for uh, some kind of a copywriting translation transcription resumes proofreading music programming whatever they are looking to buy something from someone. So every single person on Fiverr, if they're not uh, other sellers, they are other buyers. So that's really great. Uh, and so that shortcuts a lot of the hassle with building your online business because you can just show up somewhere and you don't necessarily have to, well, in a way you build a list, but you don't have to start from scratch. You just go there and there are already buyers. So a couple of things about Fiverr and Profit Dashboard. The goal with Fiverr is to put in a maximum of one hour per day. And this way you escape the freelancer trap. This way you escape uh, getting taking on a $500 job that you think will take a week, ends up taking three months. You don't want that. But we, we want to just clock in for an hour and clock out and we're done. Uh, but the amount of money we make in that hour is up to us, is up to the business we end up building. And before you turn up your nose about $5, well, the goal as well is to do this all for about a dollar a minute, if not more. And and many times I've I've worked on Fiverr for a lot higher amount than a dollar per minute. But if you can make a dollar per minute, think about that. That's sixty bucks an hour. That's more than you'd probably make from any kind of day job, from delivering pizzas, from being a a, a fi a Uber driver, whatever. A uh, dollar per minute is great. And on Fiverr. Remember how I said that you're not you're not really building a list uh, because you can't take their buyers off of there. You can't get them on a broadcast list. You can't talk to them off of the site, but you end up uh, getting the same buyers over and over. So it's not just like you say, OK, well, I'll I'll record voiceovers or I'll make videos or I'll make a, a podcast cover or I'll proofread your book and then people just like anyone just kind of comes on in. A lot of random people do come in, but you're going to notice the same buyers over and over buying from you. So your goal is to do it all in one hour, to do it in a dollar per minute, and just to have those 10 or so repeat clients so that they're easy to deal with. Uh, they know you, you know what they're looking for, and it's a very smooth transaction, and you just repeat it over and over again and have fun doing it. The goal of all of this, other than to make money and do it fast and provide a better future for your family or, or yourself or whatever, is also to make money. So, all right, so Fiverr sounds great, but if it's so easy, why isn't everyone doing it? Well, they are. There is competition on Fiverr, and so, and, but the good thing is that if you approach this from a marketer, entrepreneur, online business owner standpoint, as opposed to an employee standpoint, then you will outrank most other Fiverr sellers. What do I mean? I mean that most people treat it like a job or they treat it like, okay, well, I'm just going to make, you know, 20 bucks here and there. They don't take it seriously. They put in the bare, bare minimum of effort and then wonder why they got bare minimum results back. So what you want to do is outshine everyone who's, who's selling on Fiverr. And that doesn't mean working for free. It doesn't mean overworking yourself. It doesn't mean any of that. It just means to follow a few simple rules and do a few things that will increase your ranking. So ranking is very important on Fiverr in the same way that uh, where you rank in Google listings is important, how high you rank in iTunes is important, uh, how you rank on Amazon is important, how you rank on eBay is important. All these sites use kind of the same general rules. So on Fiverr, you, ha you post a job for whatever it is that you want to do. If you want to set up WordPress websites, if you want to hand out flyers, uh, whatever it is that you want to do, you post this job or this gig that you will do. Uh, and then Fiverr will cut you a little bit of a break for being a new buyer and they'll throw you a, f a, a new seller, I'm sorry, and they'll throw you a few buyers just off the bat just for being new. Uh, and what they're really doing here is they're trying you out. They're trying to see if you know what you're doing and if you can do a few things correctly. And that means that if you get hired to, for example, write a person's headline on Fiverr, and you say that you'll do it in 24 hours or in 48 hours, then deliver before the deadline. 
which should be easy if you enjoy what you're doing and you follow along with some of the things I told you before where you find something that is going to be fun and it's going to relate to your internet business moving forward if you ever phase out this freelancing thing which you might not even want to you might have so much fun from your one hour a day on Fiverr uh, like me and Lance Tamashiro do where you kind of keep that one hour around and also do the other business building stuff because that's one more stream of income so you deliver quickly uh, and then after the transaction transaction actions completed so someone hires you for something you deliver it you give it to them uh, then you can leave feedback for your buyer so do that most people don't even think to do that and doing that little thing will help increase your ranking uh, other things to increase your ranking is then you can uh, tweak and change around the description in your job or your gig we show you that in profit dashboard and then you accumulate ratings so think about this uh, if someone goes and looks for somebody to write a headline line uh, for for them or design a t-shirt or something or design uh, some PowerPoint slides whatever if they go to hire someone for that and they see that over a thousand people over time have left you a good rating well then it's really tough for uh, some other joker some knucklehead to knock you out of the ranking just because they they came along so there's a there's a couple of advantages here right you get you get rewarded for being new for a little while then you prove yourself and now that you've proven yourself now it's harder for anyone else who is not treating their business like a real business but you do treat your business like a real business to knock you out and then uh, so you can do those things and just get your process figured out and as you uh, get your process figured out then Fiverr will, will reward you again with more and more sales uh, until they pretty much give you as many as you can handle Handle. So the idea or the dream scenario is that you have this process figured out and you wake up and I would highly recommend that you put in your fiber hour in the morning before tackling anything else because it's just easier to knock stuff out in the morning. You wake up to some orders and knock out whatever the order, whatever you said you would do and then hot people hired you to do. So if someone hired you to hand out flyers at your local college, well then you do that on your morning walk. If someone hired you to record an audio or a voiceover or a testimonial or a screen capture video or a live action video or write a headline or write a quick article or uh, here's another fun one is there is some search engine optimization software that's really expensive or has a monthly fee people are just willing to just pay just the one-time use of it so they can pay you to push the button on the software you deliver back the report then there you go uh, and then once you get your process figured out and once it is a breeze and it's fun for you to deliver these short small orders then you can tweak your numbers and and look at things like well are my uh are more people seeing my job or less people uh what I mean, how many orders I'm actually getting? Is this increasing or decreasing? And we can kind of tweak things around and make sure our business is growing. We can avoid a slump. We can add in extra upsells. For example, uh, if you have this this headline writing gig, you can say, well, an upsell is uh, for for double the price. I'll give you three headlines instead of just the one. Or you say, uh, I'll write you uh, a quick short article, but then for an extra $10, I'll make sure to keyword optimize it, if that's what you know how to do. Or uh, you tell someone that I'll record uh, a voiceover, record an audio for you, but then for an extra 10 bucks, I'll add a music track in there, if that's something you know how to do. And then you can scale, which means you then charge higher rates for the same time or the same effort. That means that you might have a gig saying, I'll hand out a hundred flyers for five bucks at my local college and then you get some jobs like that but then if you find yourself that you kind of want to want to scale up then you say okay well now I'm gonna change it so that I'm only gonna hand out 50 flyers for, for five bucks and now you need to, to uh, buy double to get that amount or you can say well if I'm gonna um, write a, a blog post for someone then I'll say for five dollars that gets you a 200 word article but then if you get tired of that then you can say for five bucks it only gets you a hundred words you can record voiceovers and say I will record for five for every five dollars I will record a 200 word script so that's about a minute or so for every five bucks do it in one take that's easy but then you can say once you get kind of tired you can say well five dollars only gets you 50 words so now if you want it to uh, to have the for one minute now it's gonna be twenty dollars for one minute but you can't do that unless you first of all join our profit dashboard course join Fiverr 
pick the out of all the gig templates we have for you choose the one that interests you the most if it's WordPress voiceovers video writing copywriting whatever it is uh, graphics software uh, pushing a button on software whatever uh, so you figure out what the, what you want to do what you'll have fun doing then you go and uh, join Fiverr get rewarded for being new knock out some quick orders prove yourself get ranked get ratings establish a presence and then scale so I know that we talked about a lot of theory and things like that but the best way for me to show you how to do this is if and when you join profit dashboard.com today that's p r o f i t d a s h b o a r d.com there's no shame in cranking out an extra few hundred dollars per month and even if you're slammed even if you're so busy that you can't do it then give it to someone else in your household and have them uh, generate that extra stream of income I mean think about it what if um, what if your spouse or someone has their own job but then on weekends they're kind of bored well give them this hobby to do what if you have a kid who's in college and is home for the summer or home for whatever break uh, or maybe they've, they've moved back in because they finished uh, I guess the, the latest thing for millennials to do is finish college and just move right back in with the parents. Well, make them earn their rent and give them access to this profit dashboard course so that they can begin building their own streams of income. You have to start somewhere and there are a few traps here and there with getting trapped in a day job, trapped in freelancing, trapped selling low ticket products. So maybe you can relate, but there's definitely a few sides to this, right? You, you do want to scale, you do want to move to the next logical step, but no one is just going to hand you money and faking it to you making it is just not an option. You have to deliver some kind of a value to someone, whether that's handing out flyers, running a piece of software, improving someone's search engine ranking, setting up WordPress, blogging for them, whatever it is, you have to do something and you have to start somewhere. It doesn't mean you have to stay there, but you'd be surprised at how well some of these businesses, some of these Fiverr businesses can scale. And I can't wait to show you how we do that and how I'm hoping that you can do that in ProfitDashboard.com. Thanks for listening. This has been Robert Plank Show, Episode 90, The Path to Internet Freedom. Start with that day job and transition from freelancing to products and membership sites. Be sure to give us a five-star rating and review by going to Robert Plank Show slash iTunes, uh, robertplankshow.com slash iTunes, I should say, and show our sponsor today some love by going to ProfitDashboard.com. Click the button and join right now. And I can't wait to see what kind of an income stream you build on Fiverr. Thanks. 